Today I'm taking a look at one of London's more recent developments. When I say recent, this is actually a place with a lot of history behind it. Let's get to it, shall we? I'm in King's Cross at the old goods depot of the Great Northern Railway. The Great Northern Railway is the company that built the East Coast Main Line. It's most famous for its express trains, but like most railways, its real bread and butter was goods traffic. Probably their biggest earner in this area was coal, which was brought down in lengthy trains from the northeast of England to feed the hungry furnaces and fireplaces of London. By the end of the 19th century, the city was consuming around 14 million tonnes a year. That's before we've discussed the huge amount that passed through to the docks and on to export. The goods depot was built on land bought from St. Bartholomew's Hospital in 1847. This site was chosen because of its close proximity to the Regent's Canal, which ran out to Limehouse in the Docklands. The depot opened in 1850 and at the time was the largest goods station in the world. The railway tracks were laid at a higher level than the canal, which meant that the coal could be dropped down chutes into sacks or into waiting barges for onward distribution which is how Coal Drops Yard got its name. These were the coal offices, at least originally. As the depot grew, this office complex grew with it to assist with the ever-increasing admin. More Coal Drops were constructed on the other side of the canal in the 1860s, where Camley Street Natural Park is now, and eventually it became more convenient to move the coal offices over there too. This building was used by various other departments over the years, including fish, horses, and animal feed. And while I'm here, I'm just going to point this sign out. Now, assuming it's not a replica, seems like an odd thing to make a replica of. This dates back to the steam era. This Oxford Blue and Gill Sands lettering was used by the Eastern Region of British Railways from 1951. This huge building is the granary, which was completed in 1852. Coal wasn't all that the Great Northern Railway transported. As you can see from the size of this building, grain was pretty important too. This yard used to be an open basin where barges could be loaded, and you can see where the 10-ton crane used to be. A couple of other features I'd like to point out while I'm here. First, this wagon turntable. Now, railway track takes up a lot of space, especially if it has to go around corners. Wagon turntables like this were a space-saving measure. Originally, wagons were hauled around the place by horses. Steam locomotives were cumbersome and smoky, so ideally you wanted to minimise their use within the goods depot. Indeed, it was very difficult for goods merchants using the granary here to get insurance due to the fire risk. From 1877, these capstans were installed. Capstans were rotating drums that could be used to cable haul wagons around the place. With the assistance of a capstan, one man could haul a fully loaded wagon. Power came from a hydraulic power station that was on site until 1838, when the whole system was electrified. Some of the best shunters in the depot were former sailors who were used to working with ropes and capstans. Fruit and vegetables, either grown in Lincolnshire or imported via the East Coast port, were handled here in vast quantities in this part of the depot. There were even heated stores for bananas, which became hugely popular with Londoners in the early 20th century. Fish, too, were handled here, brought down by express goods trains. As you might imagine, it required very swift handling. Stone from Yorkshire and brick from Peterborough was required in vast quantities as the city continued to expand, and all of that came through King's Cross. One of the strangest traffic flows was quail brought live from Egypt by specialist keepers. They were kept in warehouses at King's Cross and fattened up for the table. Apparently these were the noisiest of warehouses. Well, I suppose unless the fish got rowdy. Things changed over the decades. In the 20th century, Britain started importing much of its grain, and the granary was mostly turned over to sugar beet. In 1923, the Great Northern Railway became part of the London and North Eastern Railway, Coal traffic went into decline from the early 1920s, with a particularly large blow being struck by the General Strike of 1926, which caused overseas buyers to turn to other sources. In the 1960s, canal traffic began to fade, as of course did the London docks, which were supplied by the region's canal. But bigger changes still were coming to the goods depot. 
1948, the railways of Britain were nationalised. The new organisation, British Railways, was looking to modernise and save money in the desperate hope of making the network pay its way, something it hadn't done since the 19th century. In 1963, the notorious Beeching Report, the reshaping of British railways, was published. This identified that the only way railways could compete with lorries on goods traffic was by totally overhauling the very concept of goods trains. The depot at King's Cross employed a vast number of staff. In 1937, 2,210 workers were recorded. Not what Beeching envisaged for his brave new world. Instead of labour-intensive loading and unloading of individual wagons, the Freightliner system was to be brought in. This would consist of express goods trains carrying containers that could be quickly loaded onto ships or lorries. King's Cross embraced the new technology, but the Freightliner company eventually decided that things weren't efficient enough. The future lay in fewer, larger depots, further out from the city centre. And so in 1986, after over 130 years of service, the goods station at King's Cross closed for good. The site was closed, but not abandoned. Small businesses soon moved into the derelict buildings, and it became a popular location for artists and craftspeople to set up shop. It became a key destination for London's rave scene, particularly after the performance art collective, the Mutoid Waste Company, moved in. Other bars and clubs followed, but it was short-lived. In 2007, the Channel Tunnel rail link moved into St Pancras and brought with it the expectation of redevelopment. The last of the clubs shut. What form redevelopment should take was a subject of much discussion, often heated, between the railways, development firms and local residents. A plan was devised and with it came a new name. No longer the railway lands, this was to be King's Cross Central. Over the following decade, much construction and renovation took place and in 2018, the redeveloped goods depot opened to the public as a collection of shops, offices and restaurants. So it remains. But despite its redevelopment, there's no shortage of history to be seen here, if you're prepared to take a closer look. I hope you enjoyed today's video, which was made with the kind cooperation of Coal Drops Yard. If you want to know more, I recommend the book The King's Cross Story by Peter Darley, which was my major source for this video. If you did enjoy the video, then please do leave a like, and if you're new around here, consider subscribing for more. Thanks as ever to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, you are the Mutoid Waste Company's My Abandoned Goods Shed. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.